On to Yemen, thousands of Yemenis have taken to the streets in the capital, Sana, to denounce Saudi Arabia's aggression against their country. Protesters chanted slogans against Saudi Arabia and its allies and said that their country will never accept humiliation. They blamed Riyadh for spreading terrorism in the Middle East and described the ruling Al Saud dynasty as a cancerous regime. The demonstrators also lashed out at the U.S. and Israel for conspiring against Yemen and blamed them for creating chaos in the country. They have pledged to stand firm against the Saudi aggression. Yemenis have time and again held massive rallies to show their frustration with foreign intervention in the internal affairs of their country. At least 20 Saudi-led coalition ground troops are already in Yemen with more on the way. That's according to Yemeni officials who say that the reconnaissance force landed in the embattled port city of Aden. But Saudi Arabia is denying any sort of ground operation and says that the troops are actually locals. We asked Middle East analyst Catherine Shackdown what the alleged incursion could mean. Some kind of reconnaissance forces trying to, to kind of figure out, you know, where the Houthis are at and, and how um, a military operation on the ground would kind of, um, you know, the high wood frame on the ground. Um, I don't think they're going in there really to commit just yet. In terms of military intervention, it's always better when something is done quickly. Uh, you don't want to drag in because you don't know what the outcome will be. And that's the, the, the danger when it comes to Yemen. Yemen is a very, um, you know, dangerous country. I mean, there are so many dangerous elements in there, um, you know, in terms of terror, that it is ridiculous to think that a military intervention on the ground will help anything. There have been so many um, civilian deaths that I think the international community is realizing that it, it can't continue that much longer. I mean, people will reach uh, a point where they will say no more. This follows five weeks of coalition airstrikes in Yemen. Saudi officials had earlier said that a ground operation would indeed eventually follow the bombardment campaign. A potential invasion force is already in position. That's why the airstrikes take an increasingly heavy toll on civilians. Saudi-led coalition has used banned weapons in Yemen on at least two occasions. That's according to Human Rights Watch, which says that cluster bombs were dropped near residential areas. The munitions inflict widespread damage on impact, but they can also pose a long-term hazard to civilians. The use of such bombs was prohibited by most of the international community back in 2008. We can get more on this now by speaking to Stephen Goose, Executive Director of the Arms Division at Human Rights Watch. Stephen, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Saudi Arabia has repeatedly denied using cluster bombs in Yemen. Um, as I understand it, it isn't actually bound by the Convention on Cluster Munitions. So what could they be afraid of? Saudi Arabia is one of the countries that has not yet joined up to the treaty that comprehensively bans these weapons. Um, most of the world has signed up to it, but Saudi Arabia and many others in the Middle East have not. But this is the latest example of, as you've, as you've already pointed out, Saudi, Arabia, Saudi Arabia's disregard for civilian populations during the course of this operation. Perhaps one of the more egregious uh, examples of their disregard, because these are weapons that the rest of the world has rejected. Now, the cluster bombs themselves, the, the suggestion has been that these were uh, made in America. The U.S. also didn't join the international ban on the use of cluster bombs. But what about the sale of them? Is that not prohibited? The U.S. has an export prohibition in effect, has been for a number of years, which points out they know that these are dangerous weapons. Um, but these particular cluster munitions, which are some of the more high-tech varieties of cluster munitions, um, are exempted from the U.S. export ban. And the U.S. has provided them to both Saudi Arabia and to the United Arab Emirates, which is also part of the Coalition Act. In fact, we're not sure which of the two of them used cluster munitions in these attacks uh, in April. And as we've already said, what, uh, around 160 or so 
countries around the world signed up for banning the use of these weapons. They're considered to be pretty horrific. Um, what kind of action could they take in a situation like this? I mean, can anybody be held accountable? Well, we think that it's important that all of those who have signed the treaty uh, speak out against this. It's important to stigmatize any use of these weapons in any circumstance. They just should be seen as beyond the pale, the way you would view chemical weapons or biological weapons. They should never be used by anyone, anywhere, anytime. So international outrage at this latest use of flush munitions is, is really important. And as you just said, I mean, there really isn't, isn't any kind of... Oh, and Stephen, are you still there? OK. Can you still hear me, Stephen? Yes, I can hear you fine. Oh, you're back. I think we just lost you there momentarily. Uh, it was pretty clear from what you just said. You, you, you cannot see any justification, any conditions where you would be able to use cluster bombs. So why are they still being used? I mean, is it just because they are horrifically effective? No, they're not effective. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we have the ban. Militaries around the world took a look at uh, how, what the utility had been and decided that the humanitarian impact far outweighed any potential military benefit. These are so bad because they get you both coming and going. They, they are, are very dangerous to civilians and, in fact, to soldiers when they're first used because they spread out over such a wide area, more than a football field, and um, kill anybody, kill or injure anybody in that area. And then many of them fail to explode on impact the way that they're designed, and then they become essentially landmines that sit there and wait for a civilian or a soldier to come, around, come along, and it may be your own soldier. If Saudi Arabia is putting boots on the ground, they may encounter leftover cluster munitions that didn't work the way they were supposed to. Stephen, thank you so much for coming on to speak to us on RT. Live from Virginia, that's Stephen Goose, Executive Director of the Arms Division at Human Rights Watch. Thank you. Now, as we've said, Saudi Arabia, Yemen and the US did not join 116 other countries in signing up to the treaty which banned cluster bombs. Human Rights Watch described the damage that these weapons can cause. A cluster munition attack disperses small bombs, submunitions over a large area, and if there are civilians in that area, they will likely get killed and injured. They often fail to explode, so they become de facto landmines that pose a threat to civilians. to Iraq. My brother take one uh, from the cluster bombs. He, he thought that it was a game. I was uh, not with them. I was a little back. That's why I like now. It was very bad, bad, bad day. Cluster munitions have been widely used um, since the 1970s. These weapons were developed for high-intensity uh, symmetric war. It's a Cold War weapon. It was designed essentially to stop huge Soviet armored formations and troop formations from rolling across the plains of Europe. This never happened. But the weapon is still there. So how, how has it been used? It has been used on civilians. Vodio sam jedan normalan život, porodičan život. Od jednom u jednom trenutku sve se to preokrenulo. Više nisam ja ono isti čovjek. United States forces have commenced airstrikes against Serbian military targets in the former Yugoslavia. Bombe su padale 4 do 5 km vazdušne linije u naseljeni deo grada gdje apsolutno nema nikakvih vojnih ciljeva. Ja sam išao prvi da očistim da ne bi nastralo neko dete ili neki civil. Ali eto, desilo se i meni to. I možda i bolje tako nego da je nastradalo neko dete. 
Kada sam ležao sam na zemlji, bol nikakvu nisam osjećao. Desnu ruku vidio sam odmah da nemam. Strašno. Strašno. They're a very indiscriminate weapon by definition. They're dropped off and spreading over a very large area. It's very difficult to actually pinpoint a target with them. And many of them fail to detonate. They stay unexploded on the ground for years, sometimes decades after, which is why they pose such a problem to civilians. These things oftentimes do look like toys. The oldest ones that are still found in Laos and Cambodia and Vietnam do look like balls. Some of the newest types, like uh, Israel used in Lebanon or the U.S. used in Iraq, kind of look like a D-cell battery with a pretty ribbon attached. The ribbon attracts children. Together we have achieved a goal many thought was impossible. For it's a truly an important event for everybody, but especially for all the people who are affected by cluster munitions or could be affected in the future. A few years ago it was an impossible thought that we would actually achieve a treaty that over 100 governments would sign to say yes we ban this whole weapons type. We need you for the long haul. This is only the beginning. The campaign to ban cluster bombs has been a global coalition, so we've got many, many individual contributions. In this historical day, when the peace agreement is signed by the bomb, it's a bomb. When you have all of these campaigners around the world working together for, for a common cause, you can really do uh, much more than, than just the sum of the parts. You can actually achieve something quite momentous, a sort of massive change. And, uh, and I think that's what we've had here in Oslo. percent from my body a uh, brand I don't want to be ugly uh, I want to be very beautiful I want to lives matter children <laughs> Allah, la la, 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 la la,